I want to talk about Fable and Xbox. Uh, I want to talk about that because I'm someone that has always been for a long time an Xbox guy. You know, 360 to the Xbox One. I'm a, I'm an, I, w- I was, a, you know, an Xbox fanboy. The Halo games, the Fable games, those were my bread and butter in terms of video games. And then the PS4 did what it did. We all know that. The games like Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us Part 2, they're undeniable. God of War, Uncharted 4, Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, do I go on of what the PS4 managed to do with its exclusives? And Xbox had no answers last generation. And at the end, it just got to the point where I'm like, Halo 5 was so bad. Halo Infinite looked like a fucking disaster, David. Looked like a disaster, man. Yeah, dude, when that when that gameplay footage of Halo 5 came out, people were just like, what the fuck? Yeah, dude. This looks like Halo 1. Yeah, it's... Non-remastered. A, uh, and not in a good way. No. <laughs> and But the trailer was so good. I remember watching the Halo Infinite trailer, mm. and, like, Master Chief is back, and the original, like, shield regen yeah. sound. Yeah. Dude, I was on the train. Buzzing. And then the train derailed and in, killed everyone. In a bad way. Men, women, and children. Yeah, in a, yeah. it was a disaster. There was yeah. screaming, there was fire, it was a lot going yeah. on. But the thing is, that you've got to remember is, it's not just Halo. There's, there's other exclusives Microsoft are working on. There's new IPs, but then there's Fable. And in early 2018, I talked about it, it was reported that, you know, the Fable game was in development from Playground, because Lionhead, obviously the original creators of Fable, closed down during the development of Fable Legends, the multiplayer game, which, thank God, it did, um, looked disastrous. And, you know, it wasn't really what a Fable fan wants to see, and I'm a big Fable fan. So I was like, I'm done with Xbox. I'm moving on. I only got the PS5 because I love the PlayStation exclusives and I can play third-party games on the PlayStation 5. I don't need both consoles. I don't need it. Then you've got Fable. So my question is to myself, but also to you as as audience members, to, to, to let me know... Is Fable enough to buy an Xbox Series X? Is it enough? That like That's a huge question to me. Because I'm not a big PC person, but I have a PC that can play games. And I have Windows 10 on it. I could play Fable on Game Pass on my PC. So what's the point? What's the point with Game Pass and the PC... To get an Xbox Series X. Is Fable enough? Because Halo Infinite's coming out, yes, and it's supposed to come out in 2021. We'll see if that actually happens. There's so much going on behind the scenes and development and changes and developers going in and out. It's hard to say, but Fable, Playground Games, is it enough to buy an Xbox Series X? And I don't have an answer, obviously, because we haven't seen the game actually in place. But... What I will say is that it has the potential. It could be the saving grace. It could be the thing that stands out. And the reason, obviously, I think Microsoft need their own first-party exclusives that are new IPs to blow us away. They, they need to have their own games that stand out and that make names for themselves. Look what Sony did with Ghost of Tsushima and Horizon Zero Dawn. New IPs on the PlayStation 4 that blew everyone out of the water. But then you look at something like God of War, where... They took a franchise that previously existed, many people loved, and reimagined it. And in my opinion, it's the best game ever made. That's what they did to that. And now I'm not putting that expectation on Fable. Absolutely not. But to reimagine an already beloved franchise that people know, people know and love Fable, it has a bigger fan base than I think people understand. Maybe not the mainstream, but certainly a thriving hardcore fan base that know and love the magic of the Fable games. I've seen it. I've been doing videos covering this Fable game for a couple of years now, and there's a big audience out there hungry to see what this game looks like, and I can't wait to see it. We all know that. And I really think it can be something that puts Xbox on the map. It's got a lot it needs to do to do that, because it can't just be like previous Fable games it's got to join the current state of RPGs from the, you know, the horizons, the witches, all that sort of stuff. But even still, it's got to be, it's, it's got to be its own and, and it's got to take the next step. We're on the new generation of consoles. You can't copy the previous gen and what they did there. You've got to do your own thing. And you've also got to be fable. You've got to have an economy. 
You've got to be able to buy property and houses and do jobs and start a family and have a dog. You know, you've got to be able to do those things that are inherently fable. You need the humor. It has to be there. It just has to be there. That Britishness to it. We talk Every video I talk about fable, I talk about the Britishness. It's got to be there. And if it can do that and really be a proper triple A, not just like, oh, this is a fun fable game. It's 10, 12 hours long story and it's fun. Like it, it's got to actually be bigger than any fable before. And I don't mean a hundred hours long. We've talked about this many times. The longer the game is, doesn't make it better. You know, it, it just doesn't. But it's got to be the most ambitious, most well-crafted fable experience ever. Every Fable game, we had Peter Molyneux in development talking about all the things that were going to be in the game and as you use the weapon, it's going to change and morph as you use it and all these promises about this, that and the other that when the game comes out, didn't happen. Sure, Peter Molyneux wanted it to happen, but it never could happen. The team wasn't prepared to do it. What Playground needs to do is deliver an experience that they advertise. You say, hey, this is what we want to make and it's going to be a huge open world Fable RPG. You've got your magic... You've got Albion, you've got heroes, you've got the Britishness and the humour, you've got the background gameplay with the economy, with the person-to-person -person interaction to be able to have a family, a house, a job, and go on your own adventures and create this character in this magical world. You've got to feel the magic of this world. That's what Albion is. It's magical. It's not just a fantasy England. It's a magical world. It's like fucking Narnia. There's creatures that we know and love. There's always n new and exciting ones we see in these games. There's places we know. Bowerstone, we saw it in this announcement trailer. Those things need to be there, but they've got to be there in a way that is advertised to us. They've got to be there in a way that's shown and promised to us and then delivered. We can't have a fable experience like the past where they tell us all these, you know bolts and whistles that are going to be on there that don't end up there. And we don't want it to be a fucking cyberpunk either. You know, that's it's disastrous. You need to release a game to a level of, and I don't mean in terms of quality of writing and, and production of like God of War, but I mean when The Last of Us 2 came out, it ran perfectly. You can hate the story, you can hate the game, but that game runs in fucking impeccably. And so did God of War. No glitches, just well-crafted game that's released to us. And if Xbox can do that and deliver to us like a promised game, that's not going to try to sell us these microtransactions underneath, that's not going to be full of bugs and rushed out, but a game that's, this is what we wanted to make, this is what we envisioned, and we actually did it. That is what gamers need right now. We don't need a thousand hours of game with shallow gameplay, shallow story in an expansive world full of microtransactions and overbloated gameplay. An overbloated world full of collectibles. We need a well-promised, well-established vision for a fantasy RPG that you can explore a magical world, have fun doing it, that's well-crafted, that tells us a story and gives us room to explore and learn about more of this world. And that is it. And if you can deliver on those simple promises, on those simple things, that's all game is. You're going to build the trust. And when you build trust, you earn loyalty. And when you get loyalty, you have people buy your fucking consoles. People are like, well, I want to get an Xbox because they make Fable. And Fable's awesome. Because when Fable comes out, you know it's going to be a good game. You're not going to get bugs. You're not going to get fucked over by being lied to about what's going to be in the game. You're not going to get fucked over about having to pay more for a million DLCs or it being shallow. You know, when you get it, this is what you're going to get. You get what you're promised. You get what you advertised. And that's the key for Fable to be the savior of Xbox or any Xbox game really to be the savior. But Fable, it has the name value. Halo's too polarizing. Halo's got too much history to it. It can't be the saviour. It can certainly be a staple and it will always be the face and staple of Xbox, I think, forever. Master Chief is who he is. But Fable could be the saviour. And you've got to inspire loyalty. And to inspire loyalty, you've got to deliver on your promises. You've got to earn trust. So that's what they need to do. Fable could 
be a reason to buy an extra Series X, it could inspire that loyalty again. It's got to do it. It's got to do it. I don't know what else will. And that's the end of it.